my name is Gregory Matthews. I'm a neurologist in Maryland in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. I specialize in epilepsy. I am, uh, I've been in practice for 16 years uh, outside of my training. Um, I got involved in my epilepsy story through my uh, initially professional relationship with Brandy as her neurologist and subsequently uh, as uh, uh, a person who was uh, believed in her cause, uh, felt very uh, strongly that her um, ideas about bringing information to women and girls with epilepsy was extremely important. Um, and the way that you do that is one person at a time. You, you make uh, an impression one person at a time and change their life. And that's the way you go forward. How you know that you have the right doctor uh, is a very individual uh, thing. Um, first of all, it's important to realize that uh, the epilepsy is a complicated condition. Uh, there are people who have partial seizures, people who have generalized seizures. Um, there are people whose seizures are well controlled with their medications, and there's people whose seizures are not controlled at all. So the patient is going to have a very different experience depending on their specifics of their condition. Um, doctors are different as well. Doctors, some doctors uh, are very authoritative and to the point and some doctors are more uh, uh, probing and uh, listening to women's uh, complaints and issues. Um, and I find that uh, people interact with their doctors uh, very differently and, and some people have, may have a certain uh, expectation or a certain desire for a certain type of physician and others uh, um, don't. So I think the, my, my main uh, advice to a woman who is trying to decide if they have the right neurologist is just how comfortable they feel. When you go to your visit, uh, are your questions answered? Um, do you feel the neurologist is listening to you, to your concerns? Um, when they do listen to you, do they give you helpful advice? Do they seem like they're knowledgeable in their area? Uh, any one of those criteria uh, can be a deal breaker. Uh, for instance, if the doctor you don't feel is listening to your concerns but is focused on their uh, specific concerns, uh, that might, may not be a good match because in the future when things get complicated such as pregnancy, um, you may not have that uh, doctor's uh, full attention. Um, and the other uh, criteria, whether they're sufficiently expert in, the, in this condition, is another uh, factor. So, um, you know, many neurologists train in very general neurology. They see lots of things that are uh, common in the neurology field. They see uh, people with, uh, with strokes, with dementia, with mu uh, multiple sclerosis. And they may have uh, a cursory uh, or superficial uh, knowledge of epilepsy, particularly when it comes to women and in and, and, and pregnancy in specific, um, and may not have the expertise that you feel that you need if your condition is particularly complex. So you should be asking some questions early on as to whether you feel that they're sufficiently experienced in, in, in uh, uh, epilepsy and the management of epilepsy. Coordinating the, your care with your uh, obstetrician and your neurologist can be very easy or can be very difficult. Uh, I think the uh, willingness of those doctors to collaborate is the most important thing and uh, you have to set that as the expectation that you want that to happen. So I can say when I see a patient in my office and they tell me the name of their physician and the office contact information, it makes it much easier for me to send records back and forth uh, and to keep in communication. Um, so uh, I think the, er the earlier you establish that expectation, the more likely that it will happen. Um, it depends on the willingness of the physicians. Some physicians uh, are very willing and in fact eager to coordinate care, uh, but you have to realize there are many obstacles to that from the physician end, that uh, people are busy, people don't have the time to uh, go out of their way to do things that require extra efforts, um, 
which is unfortunate, but it, but a, a, a reality. Um, so uh, you have to, I think you have to make it clear that that's your expectation. Uh, and if they if it doesn't, if the physicians don't uh, agree with you or don't make that effort, then and if you have time, um, it may be worth looking for other physicians. So the question of what to do if you're not comfortable with your physician is an important one. And I think that nowadays uh, patients as consumers are fairly savvy. They know what else is out there. They, know, they can get online and look at doctors' uh, credentials, reviews, etc. And not always, th those, that information is not always accurate, of course. When you read a review of a doctor, it's just like reading a review of a restaurant. You might have a person who had a bad day or a bad experience. Uh, it doesn't reflect the overall quality or, or experience of the doctor. So you do have to take some of that information with a grain of salt, but it's your own experience that's the most important. So if you're with a doctor, you're not comfortable, you don't think that they're either uh, listening or uh, expert enough to manage your care, uh, particularly if you're a woman who's planning to be pregnant or is pregnant, um, you have every right to go and find a, a, a new doctor. Um, doctors understand that as well. Doctors understand that not everybody is a good fit. Um, we've all been in the situation where we're, we're just like you. You know, we're sitting there in a room with you and we feel that maybe this isn't, this isn't going well for whatever reason. You want something other than what I offer, whether it's a personality type or just the way we communicate. And we are used to the idea that people switch doctors. Um, so, you know, it's not always the best idea be just to switch because maybe, um, you know, you don't like something about the way they dress or the way they uh, comb their hair or something, but you, you may uh, have legitimate concerns and you may want to switch doctors. If you do, I recommend that you go make another appointment you don't, have to, you don't have to make it public initially. You can go see the other doctor and say, I'm looking for a new neurologist. Would you be you know, able to meet with me and, and, and discuss my care? And let's see how it goes. This happens all the time with me. Um, and if it does go well, and you think this would be a better person for you, you, you ask the new office to collect the records from your old doctor uh, get all the records you possibly can to help facilitate the transition, and you go ahead and you do it. Remember, it's, it's important. It's your life. Um, if you're pregnant, it's the life of your baby, and you need to feel comfortable. Um, you, if you feel worried or uh, um, uh, concerned that you're going to stir up trouble by switching doctors, I think that most of us are beyond that. We understand that that's, that, that happens.